In this walkthrough, we'll be having a look at this lab performing CSRF exploits over GraphQL. So, the inbound accepts request with content type of XWW form URL encoded and therefore is vulnerable to cross site request forgery attacks. If you don't know about this vulnerability, you can check out the basics of this one over here and see how it works in a non API application. Otherwise, this video won't make any sense to you. Okay, let's go back to this lab. Make sure your burp suite is on in the background. I'm gonna turn on my burp proxy to capture the request. We can log in with Werner Peter as always. Okay, let's update the email to something else. And now let's analyze the HTTP history. Here we have the first GraphQL endpoint request, and this is a query operation which is basically fetching details about a blog post like image, title, and paragraph. And here is the second one which is similar. The third one is good, which is a mutation request and it allows the user to log in by providing their username and password. If I scroll down a bit more, here we have another one, which is a mutation operation to change an email. So we have to provide a new email and it will change it for us and display it in the response. So if I go back to this lab, it says that to solve the lab, graph some HTML that uses CSRF attack to change the viewer's email address, then upload it to your exploit server. Okay, so the one we need to mess with is this request. I'm gonna send this to repeater. And here we have the request and response. So this operation is basically changing the email through this mutation, right? If I go to the GraphQL tab, here we can see a nice view of it. It's basically using a variable to replace the value of email and its value. And as we have talked in the previous videos as well, whether you use a variable or not, or whether you put the value directly over here, it doesn't really matter because GraphQL will understand it anyway. So what I want to do is that I want to change this format with without variable one. So it's actually pretty similar. I'm going to copy this one and paste it over here. And now I will remove this part. And this input variable will be replaced by email and its value. So I'm going to copy it and paste it here remove the double quotes and keep it for the value also enclose this in curly braces okay now this looks good so this is basically with variable version and this is without variable version but they both do the same thing so i'm gonna remove the previous one and send this request and we can see it's perfectly working we are getting 200 okay and the email is changed cool okay let's go back to the raw request and we know that this endpoint is also accepting a different content type i'm gonna copy this first yeah okay so we can see that the current content type is application json and this is the json format which basically separates key value pairs with a colon and uses comma for different key value pairs okay let's change the request method to different ones so i'm gonna click on this and again change request method and here we have this content type the one we want to work with let's send this request to the server and see what the response looks like it's not really giving us any error like the server doesn't accept this content type rather we are getting query not present so we have to provide a query parameter and then provide the value like this mutation request we had earlier so i'm gonna type query equals and then this 
what I'm going to do now is URL encode it, control U, and now I'm going to send it to the server. And we are getting a response normally, so this is actually working. Let's change the email to something else, Weiner, and send the request again. And yeah, it is working. Okay, so now that we have confirmed that the GraphQL server is actually accepting this content type, means this is vulnerable to cross-site request forgery attack because there is no CSRF token present here either. So we can craft the HTML and send the request to the server to change anyone's email address. Let's try this out. So if I go to the exploit server, here we have to craft the HTML. Okay. And inside, we are going to have a form tag. So form action equals goes inside form action goes the URL. So I'm gonna copy it from here and paste it. Then method equals post. Close. And close the form tag. Inside the form tag, we are going to have three input tags. So this input is going to have a name, let's say query, and it's going to have a value for the query. Okay, before I write further into this, I want to explain something. So let me open my notepad or mousepad in this case. Okay, so, oops, let me go back, back, let me copy this one. Okay, so this is the original mutation request, right? How am I going to fit this? in HTML so the server understands. Okay, so here we have three things. The first is the query. So this thing is the query and another one is the operation name. The operation name is change email. This is the operation name for mutation. And third thing is variables. So this variables or this one are basically the same. So there are three things and we have to divide it in three input tags. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is copy this, go to verb suite and in decoder I'm going to paste this and encode it as HTML. It encodes it in HTML so it will not cause any error because of spaces. And inside the double quotes I'm going to paste this. And then I'm going to type type equals hidden and close this input tag. Okay, now I need to write another input tag and the name of this will be operation name. And it will also have a value which is change email and then close another input tag and this one is for variables so I'm gonna type variables and then value okay so in the repeater, we have this variable, so I'm gonna copy it, go to decoder, and encode it as HTML as well. Okay, 
Okay. I'm gonna type hidden for this input on the third input tag as well. And before we submit this, we also need to add another tag that is script tag. This script tag will have one little line of JavaScript document dot forms zero and then submit so this little function here will basically submit this form automatically for us if we send it to the victim okay okay so this is the current email right now let's store this and view exploit and we are not getting error luckily let me give you a little backstory when i was actually solving this lab i was getting a lot of meaningless errors so it took me a while but now it's all cool we can see that the email is updated Let's reload the page and we can see it's updated. So this exploit is actually working. Now what we need to do is deliver this exploit to the victim. Okay, so deliver exploit to victim. Okay, we are not getting any response here probably because the email is same. Let's try to change the email to something else. So I'm going to go back to decoder and change this to attacker encode as HTML and let's replace the value of variables to the new one store and deliver exploit to victim and here we go we got this you solved the lab so this lab it's not a really easy one you might face little errors minor errors here and there but you can experiment with it this video is very much practical if you would like to know some theories behind it as well how things happened and why they happened i will suggest you reading this blog i'll give the link in the description where i explain how the exploitation of CSRF works in a GraphQL endpoint and how we can mitigate them as well. Okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.